watching the channel for some time, you'll know that every once in a while, me and my brother will make the trip down to the Florida Keys to fish those world famous bridges. Usually we'll get on a bunch of fish and discover new species while I'm there, and this time it was no different. But unlike all those other times, this time I actually felt like I was armed with the right equipment to make the most of the trip. When my brother told me that he was planning this trip a couple of weeks ago, I almost told him no. If you've been keeping up, the original rod I was using had broken, and the only rod I had available was a small Walmart Shakespeare that I had pieced together. And you don't take a knife to a gunfight, so I talked to my wife, and after some Microsoft Excel magic, I was able to put together a small budget for some gear. First on the list was a rod worthy of the legendary Keys Bridges. I did a lot of research, and uh, finally I decided to go with this seven foot red boned graphite rod. And to hang on it, I also purchased this Okuma AV 10,000 Avenger. I also picked up this Tsunami SeaTek 7 foot spinning rod, it was a recommendation from Levi who I fished with in the last video, and so far I'm really loving it. It feels great, it looks nice, and best of all it was only $30 with a warranty so not bad. I used one of my brother's old reels, the Pen Pursuit 3 3000 and I was able to come up with this pretty nice setup for only $30. Considering that my other Walmart rod was only $10. I'd say that so far the rods have not been the most expensive part of this challenge. Sure, my Redbone and Okuna reel were over $150, but to be able to have three working setups for under $200 really comes to show you that you don't need to spend a fortune to start fishing. A couple of dollars at Walmart or online can go a long way. Anyway, back to our Keys trip. From the moment we hit Homestead, it started raining. In fact, it was pretty severe thunderstorms the whole way there. When we arrived, the rain had subsided, so we began to make our way down the bridge only to be slammed by another thunderstorm as soon as we set up shop. It was too dark and wet to film, but Danny and I did manage to each get on a fish before the rain lit up. But once the sun came out, we were able to begin fishing more comfortably and we began to get on more fish. As usual, it was pretty easy to start catching small grunts, mangroves, yellowtails. The grunts we kept for bait and we harvested a mangrove snapper that was 10 inches. At some point in the morning we were joined by some more of our friends and Danny got busy filleting some of the grunts for cut bait. I decided I was going to grab one of those carcasses and put it on a line so I grabbed the biggest one I could find and threw it out to sea. Within a few minutes I saw my rod slide all the way across the rail and I knew I was on. At this point my camera was off and my GoPro was charging so the next couple of minutes were really stressful but I was able to show Danny how to film with my camera while I had Alex grab the rod and I picked up my GoPro and took the rod back from him and began finding the fish. All right. What kind of shark is this, Danny? Yo, well, we told you it's a shark. I don't think you're gonna bridge at this thing, Steven. This thing is like 40 pounds. Oh, it's running, it's running, it's running. YouTube videos flashed before my eyes. I was thinking of walking it all the way down the bridge like I'd seen Landshark do, but my brother was convinced we were going to be able to net him, so that's the approach we took. In hindsight, it might have been optimistic, but in the end, the shark broke off before we were able to get him under the net. Obviously, I'm bummed that I lost it, but what an experience, guys. And let me tell you, if you ever get a chance, you have to try this. Feeling the power of that animal, the weight of its body in the water, it was really an unbelievable experience. Not only that, what a way to break in the new rod, right? Talk about a stress test. Now I'm sure that if I ever get on a big snapper, or grouper, my rod and my reel will be able to handle it. In my opinion, you have to land the fish to say you caught it, so that shark's gonna stay off the books, but it's okay because not too long after this hookup, I was able to get on another shark. Oh, he's right there. We got up. This guy was a 42 inch bonnet head, officially the largest fish I've ever caught, and my very first shark. Needless to say, that was the icing on the cake for the day to be able to land one of those after losing the monster was really encouraging. The rest of the day was what you could expect from the Keys, plenty of grunts, snappers, and a whole lot of sun. 
Shout out to the boys, Alex, Ben, Danny, and especially to my brother Steve, who is completing his 25th cycle around the sun tomorrow. Happy birthday, bud. We love you. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and keeping up with the progress. Until next time.